hello, happy Tuesday. <clears throat> Sorry I'm a bit froggy. <laughs> Don't know why I'm a bit froggy. The weather is uh, not too bad today actually, we've not got rain for a change. I have been up to the post office uh, to post off a cardigan for a lady who has very, very kindly been waiting and waiting and waiting through all this postal struggles with the cyber attack and everything. Uh, she lived in Canada, so I wasn't unsure whether she would still want the jacket. Anyway, she did. So, thank you very much. You know who you are, if you're watching. Uh, thank you for having faith in me and for waiting. So, I posted off a granny square jacket to her today. So, cheers. I've got chocolate milkshake today. Put the lid on, otherwise I will be throwing it everywhere, as I usually do. Um, well, for those of you who weren't on my live and were wanting to know what happened at the craft show, <laughs> the answer is zilch. It wasn't a good day. Um, there wasn't the footfall. Even though it was very well um, promoted, I don't know whether it was because it was the day before Mother's Day in the UK here or what it was, but there just wasn't the footfall. And, um, you know, people were walking around, you know, and they were just like looking like that, but nobody was really stopping and having a look. You know, you don't mind if people look and then decide that they don't want what you're selling, but when people don't even stop and they don't even take a look, you know, that is sort of I don't know, very defeating to anybody that's trying to sell. I mean, what do you do? Stop them in the tracks and say, whoa, come over here, have a look at what I'm selling. But it wasn't just me. Um, I mean, I got very despondent, because I think you do, when you go all the way, lugging all your stuff there, and nobody takes a matter notice, you know. But it wasn't just me. Um, I was talking to other people that were having the stalls there, and they were having no sales either. So it was just a pretty, pretty disappointing type of day. As my son said, perhaps you're in the wrong area. You know, you need a better, I hate to say it, better class of area. But I don't have transport, so it makes it very difficult because I would have to beg, borrow my son to take me A, B, C, D all over the place. Which I know would probably be um, better money-wise. But also you've got to take into account the fact that a lot of these better class of craft fairs also charge a lot more for the stall fee. Um, I mean, for example, there's one in, in Cleveland, it's going to be for some kind of a car show. And you have to take your own table and you have to take your own gazebo. And they want £70 for the privilege of you having a stall there. Which, I would never make that money back, ever. <laughs> Because in order to make your £70 back, you've got to send, sell two or three hundred pounds worth of goods, really. Because, you know, if you sell £70 worth of stuff, you haven't made any profit and you've just paid it out on the stall. So, I think I'll give that one a miss. I'll leave that to people who maybe sell higher priced articles than I do. You know, I've been having discussions with my friends about different things and... You know, they were saying, like, maybe I don't charge enough for my things. Maybe people think that because they're cheap, they're rubbish, you know. But I tend to price my things what I think is reasonable. You know, kind of what I would expect to pay for things. But obviously, maybe that's wrong. Um, I look at things where people are paying, like, £40 for a hat. <laughs> hmm? Really? <laughs> And yet they've got millions of sales, you know, on it, see, like for £40 hats. I mean, are they really such better crocheters than I am? Are they really? Is my stuff really so rubbish that I can't even sell a hat for a fiver, you know? Ah, oh, dear. Then you wonder why, you know, I get so down. Yesterday I was having a really, really down day. You know, this is why am I bothering day? Why am I doing this? Why am I just bothering to even try was how the mood I was in. But I woke up this morning thinking, I am not going to be defeated. I am not going to give in and throw the towel in. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to 
pick myself up, put my big girl's pants on, you know, and try another method of sewing. Because believe me, you know, I am determined this year. It is going to be my year this year, yeah. So, yeah, I've got to think. Etsy, no way. I am not going there ever again. I've done, I've given them three chances. And three times they've done the dirty on me, really, you know, with charges and different things. And they don't promote your stuff. They don't give a hoot, do they? And it used to be wonderful. It used to be all for craft and everybody was crafty minded that was on there. But now, I don't know who's in charge, but they sell any old tat from any old way. Yeah. And they're not bothered about the crafters anymore. They're not concerned. They just want money, money, moolah, money, 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 you know. And um, I've always said I really hope they crash and burn because they deserve to for what they've done to crafters. And it isn't just me. I mean, I'm talking to other people that used to be okay on Etsy, used to make money on Etsy, and now they don't, yeah. So, anyway, enough of my woes, you know. I still did do some crochet. I started it before at the craft fair, so I just made a little nasty waistcoat, no pattern, as usual. I just trimmed it with a little bit of ice yarn that I had around the bottom. And my, that was a nightmare in itself, that bit of ice yarn, because it just fell into a great, massive eyelash yarn bath. And if you've ever had an eyelash yarn bath, you know what I'm talking about. It just goes into a mess. So I finished up with about six little tiny balls because I had to cut it. I just couldn't untangle it. When eyelash tangles, it really tangles and it gets into such a knot. Anyway, it's a little vest. Um, I can't tell you where I will be promoting it because I don't know at the moment in time. Don't know. Yeah, I'm toying with web pages. I'm toying with making web design pages. I'm toying with all sorts of things. My brain is going over time, thinking, thinking, thinking. But of course, I don't really have the expertise to put these thoughts into my mind, yeah. So I don't know, yeah. I've got a, a room behind me full of the stuff from the craft fair that hasn't made it back to the ship yet. At least it's made it out of my son's car. <laughs> we had a bit of a drama on Saturday because my son lost my, my door key. And so it was a bit of fun. We only had one door key between us now. <laughs> between three of us, we've only got one door key. Anyway, my son has been out today and had two more door keys cut. So I need to find a new key ring because my other key ring had a little bell that jingled. So if you wanted to know whether your key was in your bag or your pocket, you just had to touch your pocket and it jingled, or you had to touch your handbag and it jingled. So I need to find, I think I've got another key ring that's got sort of a, a jingle on it, a bell. So I need to find that from somewhere in my bedroom, wherever it may be, and put that on my new key. Otherwise, you see, the three of us are all out tomorrow, so we would be all stuck with one key between three of us, wouldn't we? So anyway, that's solved. The problem has solved it. I am wearing one of my new um, necklaces that I got off eBay. I have bid on some more, so I've got some more coming uh, sometime this week. You know, you might as well cheer yourself up with something, you know. I'm cheap and cheerful is me. Can't afford to splash out on anything expensive. You know, so, cheap and cheerful necklaces. <laughs> That's the way I'm doing it, yeah. I am wearing a, a very bright skirt uh, that came from a friend in America. Um, this one did. So I'm wearing that today, along with a very old cardigan that I made many, many moons ago. All I can tell you is it was the leaf hopper stitch that I used on a basic cardigan. So there isn't an actual pattern for this. I just found the leaf hopper stitch in my crochet book stitches, as I am wont to do, and just used a basic cardigan pick pattern and put the stitch to it. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to go back to my knitting. Um, I stopped my knitting, though the cable chunky I was knitting. I stopped it because I'd got to the bit where you divide for the neck. 
and I couldn't concentrate when I was at Nickel, you know, doing the cable pattern and doing the division through the neck at the same time. So I've still got two sleeves to knit on that. Um, I did start some other knitting on my new needles, you know, my new knit pro needles, but I wasn't actually feeling it with it. You know, when you start something off and you just don't feel it, I don't know whether you know what I'm talking about, it didn't feel right. It was a very dark purple colour, I should say, and I was knitting on dark blue needles, which didn't help. So I'm thinking, shall I go back to crocheting another Adonis Chan's basic sweater patterns with it? So I may just do that. Um, so while I think of what the next thing I'm going to do <laughs> in my crochet journey, you know, in my bid to become famous <laughs> or infamous, whichever way you want to think about it, how to get your name known. That should be a title, shouldn't it, of one of my, you know, YouTube videos. How to get your name known in YouTube land. <laughs> Do you have to prance about wearing a bikini half naked? Do you have to splash about in water with your wool in a Tupperware jar? <laughs> For those who would not, don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch Star Lily Creations. Um, she was prancing about in a waterfall with her yarn in a money. The yarn was actually going in the water, so it, you know, it was a bit of a waste of time for her, really. I don't think she noticed her wool, wool was trailing in the water. But maybe I should do that, you know. Who knows what I should do next, yes. You know, wear exotic flowers in my hair, you know. Wear very gothy makeup, you know. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please. In the comments, please. What should I do to get myself known? <laughs> and no, I don't plan on doing anything like a bank robbery or anything to get my name in the papers, no. I think that's a little bit drastic. Um, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking where I go next in my crochet journey. I hope you'll be with me and follow me on my crochet journey because, you know, it would be nice to not be on my own. Somebody to follow me along and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a bit of, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, rah from the crowd. <laughs> bit of enthusiasm, you know. Because when you're feeling a bit, ugh, a bit flat, you know, somebody on your side rallies round and says, yes, you know, yes, your stuff is wonderful, marvellous. You should be selling it, you should do this, you should do that. It's sort of like a proverbial kick up the backside, really, isn't it? I think that's what I need. I desperately need friends with ideas. <laughs> I've got some lovely friends on YouTube, but mostly they live zillions of miles away from me. You know, whereas I would love like a face to face sit down with somebody and say, right, Janet, this is what we're going to do next. I have these ideas in my head that never come to fruition because I am a rubbish market manager. Yeah. I am rubbish at promoting myself. In the past years ago, did you ever go to these um, seminar things where, you know, they stand there and they're like, you can believe in yourself, you can do this, you can do that. And you leave there full of what's it called, and then when you get home you think, yeah, all they've done is promote themselves, they haven't promoted me at all, yeah. They get you all fired up, don't they, full of enthusiasm, yes, you can do this, I did this, I did that. But they don't actually really tell you how they promoted themselves. I think that their promotion is the fact that they are promoting your, themselves to other people. Yeah. Um, I think that's how they get their whatever, their crowds of people that follow them. And I'm just watching because there's a pigeon just going to come down for his afternoon snack on our grass seed. Yay pigeon, go away pigeon. No, he's gone down, he's eating the grass seed. 
I need a scarecrow. I need words of gumbage in the garden. Go down. Oh, he's flown away. Something must have disturbed him. <laughs> uh, usually the dogs will chase them, but we're not letting the dogs on the grass while we try to grow it. I mean, my son did look at it optimistically the other day and say, I think the grass is growing. And I'm looking at it, I think you're wrong, because I don't see anything growing. I just see grass seed, and it's not sprouting. <laughs> Goodness knows we've had enough rain, you know, so if it was going to swell and sprout, it should be swelling and sprouting, but we've not had the sunshine, you see. We need the rain, don't we, but then we need the sun to dry up all the rain. <laughs> that reminds me of Incy Wincy Spider, that I used to play with my child on his hand. Incy Wincy Spider climbed up the drain. Down came the rain. Oh, climbed up the spout, that's it. Down came the rain. Oh, washed the spider out. Out came the sun, dried up all the rain, so wincy wincy spider climbed up again. I'm sure you've all played wincy wincy spider with your kids. Yeah. I was watching somebody somewhere on Facebook, they were talking about the horrible things that we say to our kids in the guise of nursery rhymes, you know. <laughs> you know. Oh, there's two pigeons now having a snack. Oh, how wonderful. You know, when you think of some of the nursery rhymes that we sing to our kiddies, you know, they're a bit gruesome, aren't they? Yeah. rock a -bye baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will drop. And down will come baby, cradle and all. That's not very nice, is it, to say to them? And then the three blind mice, isn't they, you know? The farmer will chop off the nails with the, the tails with a carving knife, you know. Gruesome, aren't they? I remember the one about the troll living under the bridge. I'm a troll, hold your roll, and I'll eat you for supper. Hey? Eh? <laughs> Just the thing to sing to a child when it's on its way to bed, isn't it, yeah? Or night, night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. So you're laying in bed thinking, bed bugs, how big are bed bugs? Are they big? Will they bite? Will they hurt? So you lay there like that, wide awake, waiting for these bed bugs to come and bite, yeah? <laughs> it's a wonder we grew up untraumatised, isn't it, really? And yet we did. Yet we did. And now this new generation, you can't say this to a child, you can't say that to a child. I'm frightened of opening my mouth these days with it. Is, is it them, they, who, what, why, were? <laughs> I'd be bound to put my foot in it. I really would if I was talking to anybody. I don't even understand it. If I understood it, I might be all right. I don't. I'm too old. I've decided I'm too old for all this stuff. By you know, bar bar green sheep and all that stuff. Because you can't say black sheep, you can't say white sheep, yeah. Ugh. I tell you, it's a nightmare. And that's for being woke. What the heck is that? What the heck is woke? I mean, woke to me is when you're wide awake, isn't it? You know, that's the only thing I know that's woke. Yeah? Well, I've woken you up, you know. <laughs> Would you like to be woken up? Oh, we've got another pigeon there. We've got three having snacks now on the garden. Ah, it's pigeon paradise. Smogger's board for pigeons. At least the seagulls haven't come down yet. Ah, yeah, well. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I should go back. I've got, I've put my knitting. This is the problem I have with whips. I don't mean the whips and chains, no, not that. Works in progress. Once I put anything down, it is gone out of my brain. I put the knitting down to do crocheting for this <laughs> wonderful craft fair. So I put my knitting down and now I don't know where I'm up to. 
it will only take me five minutes to think about where I'm up to and, you know, whatever. But it's like, I don't know how people do that on a regular basis, you know, open a bag and have to think, where am I up to with this project that's in this bag that's been in here for two, three, four, five, ten months, yeah? How do you cope? I can't. I finish something, I start it, and I finish it usually. I might have two projects on the go. I might have something in knitting and something in crochet. But I can't cope with people who have bagfuls of stuff. Do six rows on this and done six rows on that and I've worked a bit on my sock and and I'm like, oh, oh, how do you keep track? Do you have little notes that you put in things? Or is your memory a lot better than mine is? My memory's like worse than the goldfishes and it goes round the bowl, you know. Yeah. I read somewhere that something oh it was a comedian in America, he was saying that some tablets and stuff that they're selling in America to improve your memory actually come from jellyfish. And like he was saying, how do jellyfish, how do people know that jellyfish have got a good memory? <laughs> have you laid underneath and asked a jellyfish, do you remember what happened last week? I don't know where they get this idea from. But it's like the thought that when the goldfish goes round the bowl, it's forgotten it's been round the bowl. How do they know? How do they know? I don't think anybody's ever sort of put electrodes on a goldfish and see what its brain capacity is. Because then that would be cruelty to animals, wouldn't it? No. I just think my brain's full. I've got to the ripe old age where my brain is full. At one time it took in information. Hey, look at me, I can do information. I can do patterns, I can do anything, I can do all, all sorts of things. I can do mental arithmetic, if you remember that, in my head. I can't even do arithmetic now with a pen and paper. And yet we used to have a teacher at school who used to fire questions at us. He used to have us all stood up and he used to terrify me, terrify me, because I'm no good under pressure. And he would fire a question at me. You know, simple, two fours. Yeah, that's simple. He wouldn't do simple. But if he said eight, he could sit down. Yeah. So whenever it was like, <clears throat> to me, I was like, <laughs> and every brain cell deserted me. So I was always one of the last ones standing, you know. And then if he didn't get it right, then he would throw the board rubber at you. Now, if you know what a board rubber is, <laughs> it's the thing with, they don't have them now because they call them whiteboards now. But in my days it was a blackboard. And he had this dustery thing. And they used to rub out the chalk off the board when they used to clean it. Well, of course, it got full of chalk. So when he decided to launch it at you, he never really aimed it at you. He aimed it at the wall above you. Yeah, but it sort of whistled past you as if it was going to hit you. But then it went boof. And you got covered head to foot in chalk and dust. I mean, now, of course, they couldn't do that. That would be abuse of children now, wouldn't it? I mean, I have actually been hit by the, by the board rubber on a couple of occasions when he... I won't say he meant to do it. I think he meant to hit the wall behind me. But that's what he did, you see, if he weren't paying attention. And I used to sit at the back of the room and it was like where the, the pipes where the hot water came through for the heating. And I was sat in the corner, so I had pipes on this side of me and pipes on that side of me. And if it was a very hot day, well, hot because of the pipes, you would find yourself nodding. Because, as you know, in later life, they found out I've got narcolepsy. So, but it wasn't obviously diagnosed when I was a child. So I do have this unfortunate habit of nodding off. So I would be like sitting in the classroom when my eyes must have been closing like that, and then whoosh! <laughs> Dust, board dust used to come flying at me. Wake up at the back. <laughs> Miss Buckley, are you with us? <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> if you were with us, what did we say last? Uh, uh, 
uh, my friend had been whispering to me from the corner. He said such a thing, he said such a thing. She was very good with her ventri ventriloquism, yeah. He said such a thing, such a thing. So I'd say, oh, so, 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 so. Ah, you were taking notes then, were you, Miss Buckley? <laughs> Oh, those were the days, yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, I actually loved school. I didn't hate it at all. You know, you used to get shouted at by the teachers, but and you used to get teased by your peers, but there was none of this bullying, there was none of this attacking people and stuff like that. You got ribbed, as we call it. That means you're making, you're the butt of somebody's joke. You got ribbed. Um... But then you'd do it back to somebody else. You'd rib them and make a joke on them and, you know. But I mean, by and large, I actually love school. And surprisingly enough, I actually like school dinners. Apart from when we had smoked fish, finny haddock, as we used to call it. I never liked the finny haddock. That was one dinner. No, didn't eat that. And liver. The liver you could have sold your shoes with. You had to put new soles on your shoes with the liver. Don't know what they used to do with it, but bonk, 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 bonk. they could have knocked it on the table. It was that hard. You couldn't chip through it. So the liver was never the favourite in our table. We used to sit on tables of eight, and I was the one in charge of dishing out the dinners. You know, you had to portion them out. And it was always a bit tricky because, you know, sometimes they'd give you six pieces of meat and there was eight people on the table and you're thinking, what do I do with this? I'll have to cut a bit off this one and cut a bit off that one. I think it was kind of a, a lesson in maths, you know, how to divide six pieces of meat up between eight people, you know. You were always glad when people said, oh, I don't want one, don't want any of that, you know, especially if it was fish. Nobody wanted the fish and definitely nobody wanted the liver. They'd just say, we'll just have the mashed potato and the carrot, yeah. And, uh, and gravy. Yeah, they did do nice gravy, I won't say that for them, yeah. And they did nice shepherd's pie and things like that. Most of the meals were quite good. I know people say, ooh, school meals, they were dreadful. Oh, they were awful at our school. But we actually had them catered with on the premises. So it makes a difference, I think, than when they deliver them in a van, you know, and they're sort of lukewarm and somebody's got to warm them up, you know. Makes a difference when they're cooked on the premises, I think, yeah, which I was worth, thankfully. But, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go back now and uh, try and pick up my knitting and see if there's anything good on the telly to watch, which is usually a bit dire. There are either some cheesy romance or something on the telly or... I hate quiz games. I really hate quiz games with a passion. And as for reality shows, I mean, who the heck cares who's on Love Island and all this junk? Yeah, I don't care. I don't care for any of that stuff. So it's a bit of a, you know, a minefield like going through the TV, trying to find something that isn't a reality show and that isn't a, a quiz show. I'm sure I'll find something. If not, I should go back to YouTube and try and watch somebody's YouTube that's interesting. That's not a short. Ugh, I hate those shorts. <coughs> so I'll see what there is to watch. That's my cue to go. See you all very soon. Bye now.